All right, so this video is all about how Lewis structure can be applied to ionic bonding. Now, Lewis structure is primarily concerned with covalent bonding, but it can also be applied to uh, ionic bonding. And uh, remember that ionic bonding is the transfer of electrons from a metal to a nonmetal to form a cation and an anion. The cation is a positively charged ion that comes from the metal, and the anion is a negatively charged ion that comes from the nonmetal. And when we do Lewis structures for ionic compounds, uh, electrons are transferred in a way that, uh, such that both the cation and the anion each have a noble gas electron configuration, uh, which is most of the time is an octet. It could also be a duet um, if it's, you know, it just depends on the valency of it. So uh, let's just go through a couple of examples and see if we can't predict the chemical formulas of, uh, of some ionic compounds just by using Lewis theory. So suppose I want to know the formula of a compound, an ionic compound, between uh, sodium and chlorine. So how could I use Lewis theory to uh, figure out the uh, chemical formula for this ionic compound? Well. One way to start is simply by drawing the Lewis structures of both compounds. And sodium has one valence electron, so its Lewis structure looks like this. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, so its Lewis structure looks like that. And is there any way we can uh, transfer uh, an electron or more, one or more electrons from the metal to the nonmetal, i.e., to this, from the sodium to the chlorine, uh, to achieve a noble gas electron configuration for both species? And the answer is uh, yes, we can. Um, if one of these uh, uh, electrons from the sodium atom uh, leaves the sodium atom and attaches to the chlorine atom, then we'll have both atoms or both ions will now have uh, will now have an octet. So sodium atom is now an Na plus, and it it has one fewer electron. And the uh, chloride ion looks like this, and it has a negative charge. Uh, typically, uh, when we do Lewis structures for ionic compounds, the anion is in brackets, but the cation is not. I'm not sure what the reasoning behind that is, but uh, apparently that is the convention. So that's what I do as well. Now, it may look like the sodium doesn't have an octet, but if you examine the uh, electron configuration for sodium, the, uh, the ground state electron configuration for sodium is 1s2... 2s2, 2p6, and then 3s1. So by uh, removing the electron from the sodium atom to form the sodium ion, uh, the, this is the ground state electron configuration for sodium, just the atom. But if we have one fewer electron, in other words, if we have the sodium plus ion, then this 3s1 electron goes away. So now the n equals 2 shell is the valence shell. And notice that we have 6 plus 2 or 8 electrons in that outermost shell now, now that we've, uh, de then now that we've ionized this sodium. So there is an octet here, even though it's not shown uh, in the formula for the compound. So let's, uh, let's try another one that may be a little bit more difficult. How about... Uh, what is the formula uh, for a compound that forms between calcium, Ca, and fluorine? Well, fluorine's pretty easy. It was just like chlorine. When we drew the Lewis structure for chlorine, it had seven valence electrons. Fluorine also has seven valence electrons. Calcium has two valence electrons, so I'll just draw them like that. So now notice that if we just get rid of one, uh, if we just get rid of one electron from the calcium and give it to the fluorine, the fluorine will be valence satisfied and it will have a, uh, an octet, but the calcium will still have that one remaining electron. So that's that's no good. Instead, what if uh, one calcium 
uh, atom was able to donate one electron each to two individual fluorine atoms. So what if, in, a, in other words, I had another fluorine atom, which is possible, and what if I were to, you can't see that, now you can, what if I were to get rid of this electron uh, over to this fluorine atom and get rid of this electron over to this uh, fluorine atom? So we actually do have a, a way to express that um, with the chemical formula. And the way that we do this is by saying instead of one calcium ion, uh, or excuse me, we have one calcium ion, so that's Ca2+, plus because the calcium has gotten rid of ha has gotten rid of two of its electrons, so the calcium ion has two fewer electrons than it did when it was just the calcium atom. And now uh, our fluoride ion looks like this with eight valence electrons, uh, and this is minus, but we have two of them. So, so this is the formula for uh, calcium fluoride. Uh, let's do one more. How about uh, potassium, K, and oxygen? Uh, once again, it might help to do the Lewis structures. Potassium has one valence electron. Uh, oxygen has six. So now it looks to me like it's going to take two potassium ions, each losing an electron, to one oxygen atom, excuse me, two uh, potassium atoms losing one electron each to the one oxygen atom uh, to form two potassium ions associated with every one oxygen oxide ion. So let's write it. So in other words, uh, I have a second potassium and each one of these potassiums donates one of its electrons over there to the oxygen in order to satisfy both atoms, giving an octet for both. So in this case we actually have two potassium ions, so 2K+, plus, and then our, our anion in brackets, O, eight valence electrons, and this is a two minus, because the oxide ion has two more electrons than it did when it was just the oxygen atom. Remember, electrons are negatively charged, so when we add them, we're actually decreasing the charge of this. It's becoming more negative. Um, so that pretty much does it for all the examples uh, that I've got for you. Um, again, when we look at these formulas, uh, the formulas may give us the impression that uh, you know these ionic compounds are composed of these discrete units where you have two potassium and one oxygen atom and they're just floating around in those little two to one ratios, but that's not true. Uh, really, we have lattices. The chemical formula for an ionic compound just shows the smallest charge neutral collection of cations and anions. It doesn't sh really show us anything about the structure. And this is in general why Lewis theory is more uh, applicable to covalent compounds because it actually gives you a lot more insight into the structure of the compound. So look for that in the coming videos and uh, have a good one.